assalamu alaikum students welcome back with another session in real analysis we continue our discussion of sequences and in today's lecture we are going to study bounded sequences and a very important theorem relating to bounded sequences which is monotone convergence theorem so let us first of all define a bounded sequence so a sequence sn of real numbers is said to be bounded if there exists a positive real number i such that sn mod is less than i for all n belonging to capital n for all natural numbers n okay so this is the definition of a bounded sequence so a sequence sn of real numbers is said to be bounded if there exists a positive real number i such that mod of sn is less than that positive real number i for all natural numbers n also a bounded sequence is both bounded below and bounded above okay so a bounded sequence is bounded below as well as bounded above so according to the completeness property any subset of real numbers there is bounded above has a supremum nr and similarly if it is bounded below then it has an infimum nr so according to the completeness property our bounded sequence will have an infimum and a supremum so a bounded sequence has both an infimum and a supremum okay so we write infimum of sequence sn is infimum of sn and supremum of sn is supremum of sn okay so our bounded sequence is both bounded below and bounded above and it has both an infimum and a supremum so now let's have some examples of sequences and see whether they are bounded or not
So let us consider a sequence a n equal to n over n plus 1. Okay. So first of all, let us list some of the elements of this sequence. So if we put 1 over here in place of n, so our first term of the sequence will be 1 by 2, the second term will be 2 by 3, 3 by 4, 4 by 5 and so on. Okay, so here we can see that this sequence is an increasing sequence and the terms of the sequence get closer and closer to 1 as we go on taking more and more terms of this sequence. And 1 by 2 is the smallest value of this sequence. So 1 by 2 is an infimum of this sequence and supremum is 1. Okay, so this sequence is a bounded sequence with infimum as 1 by 2 and supremum as 1. So this is a bounded sequence. So here infimum of a n is equal to 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 and supremum of a n is 1. So this is a bounded sequence. Now let us have another example. So we have another sequence b n which is sin n x. Okay. So here we can see that this sequence has a highest value of 1 and smallest value of negative 1. So this is also a bounded sequence and its infimum is negative 1 and supremum is 1. So this is also a bounded sequence. So here infimum of our sequence bn is minus 1 and supremum of bn is 1. Okay. Now another sequence cn which is of this form a r to the power n minus 1 this is called a geometric sequence and if we take r is greater than 1 okay then this sequence is bounded below by a so this has an infimum a but this sequence is not bounded above okay so this sequence is bounded below but not bounded above hence unbounded not bounded or unbounded okay so here infimum of this sequence is a but it does not have any supremum so this sequence is not bounded okay so a sequence is bounded if it has both an infimum and a supremum okay if it is both bounded below and bounded above so now we are going to discuss a very important theorem relating to bounded sequences and that theorem is monotone convergence theorem and this theorem basically says that a bounded sequence converges if it is monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. So a bounded sequence which is also monotonic always converges. Okay, So let us state monotone convergence theorem.
So theorem let S n be a bounded sequence. Then number one, if S n is monotonically increasing, then it converges to its supremum. and b if sn is monotonically decreasing monotonically decreasing then it converges to its infimum okay so this is the statement of a monotone convergence theorem so a monotone convergence theorem basically shows that a bounded sequence is always convergent if it is either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing so if a bounded sequence is monotonically increasing then it converges to its supremum and if a bounded sequence is decreasing then it converges to its infimum. So now we are going to prove this theorem. Proof. So let us consider let S and B be a bounded sequence. where infimum of Sn be some number small m and supremum of Sn is capital M. Okay? So we are considering a bounded sequence with infimum as small m and supremum as capital M. Okay, so if we consider this thing on a diagram, okay, so let this number be small m and this be capital M. Okay. So here this m is infimum of our sequence and m is supremum and let this terms of sequence be over here. So these are the terms of our sequence. Okay. So here m is supremum and small m is infimum. So let epsilon be a positive real number then if we consider this number which is suppose m minus epsilon so this distance is epsilon and this number is m minus epsilon then then there exists a term S and not of our sequence say that m minus epsilon is less than S and not. Okay, so if we consider, so now m minus epsilon will be less than some term over here of our sequence. Okay, so there exists a term S and not of the sequence which is greater than this m minus epsilon so now let us consider the first case if sn increases then 
एम माइनस एप्सिलॉन इज लेस देन एस एन नॉट विच विल बी लेस देन एस एन एंड देट विल बी लेस देन एम विच इज लेस देन एम प्लस एप्सिलॉन सो एम प्लस एप्सिलॉन इज अ नंबर ओवर हेयर ओके सो ओवर सीक्वेंस इज इंक्रीजिंग सो एम माइनस एप्सिलॉन इज लेस देन अ टर्म एस एन नॉट ऑफ द सीक्वेंस which is less than sn because there are some terms which are greater than that sn not and our sequence is increasing so every next term is greater than the previous term so sn not is less than sn and sn is less than m because m is supremum of sn and m is less than m plus epsilon so this inequality holds for n greater than n not okay so we can also write this thing as m minus epsilon is less than sn which is less than m plus epsilon for n greater than n not and if we subtract m from each side of this inequality then we get so this implies on subtracting m from each side we get minus epsilon is less than sn minus m which is less than epsilon for n greater than n not so again this thing can be written as sn minus m mod is less than epsilon or n greater than n not so if we consider the definition of the limit of a sequence then the limit of our sequence sn is m so this implies limit of the sequence sn as n approaches infinity is m so this implies sn converges to m so our sequence sn converges to its supremum okay now if we come back to our infimum and again if we consider again the same positive real number epsilon then m plus epsilon will be some number over here okay now m plus epsilon will be greater than some term of our sequence okay so now there exists some term suppose sn1 say that say that sn1 will be less than m plus epsilon now we consider that our sequence decreases if sn decreases then we can write this inequality that m minus epsilon will be less than m okay and m is basically less than sn okay and sn is less than sn1 which is less than m plus epsilon so now our sequence decreases now every next term will be less than its previous term okay so here this thing holds for n greater than n1 so we can write this thing as m minus epsilon is less than sn which is less than m plus epsilon so we can write this thing again minus epsilon is less than sn minus m which is less than epsilon so this implies sn minus m mod is less than epsilon for n greater than n1 okay okay so this implies 
that our sequence S n converges to small m, which is its infimum. Okay, so this implies S n converges to m. Hence, prove. Okay, so here our monotone convergence theorem was that a bounded sequence converges. if it is monotonically increasing or decreasing if it if it is monotonically increasing then it always converges to its supremum and if it is monotonically decreasing then it converges to its infimum okay so here we took our sequence sn which is a bounded sequence having an infimum and a supremum and then we proved that if it increases then it converges to its supremum and if it decreases then it converges to its infimum so that was the proof of the theorem so with this we come to the end of today's session and in the next lecture we will talk about cauchy sequences and related theorems so see you in the next lecture